And this is what the uh, kingdom of Ayodhya was like under the rulership of Lord Ram. Now this is, so I'm going to read a couple verses. And this is from the Yudakanda, Canto 128, verses 98 through 106. And when I talk about the Ramayana, I'm talking about the Valmiki Ramayana. So, and it says, starting from verse 98, it says, While Sri Ram ruled over the kingdom of Ayodhya, there were no widows to lament over their loss, nor was there any danger from beasts of prey or snakes, nor again was there any, any fear of diseases. And as we go through these, there's different levels of understanding that we can get, <clears throat> which I'll review once I'm done with it. Text 99 says, The world had no robbers or thieves, nor did anyone suffer harm, nor again did old people ever perform rituals relating to the death of their youngsters. Every creature felt pleased, and everyone was devoted to righteousness. Turning their eyes toward Sri Ram alone, creatures did not kill one another. So long as Sri Ram ruled the kingdom of Ayodhya, people lived to an age of thousands of years, were blessed with thousands of sons, and remained free from diseases and grief. So long as Sri Ram ruled the kingdom, the talks of the people centered around Sri Ram, Sri Ram, and Sri Ram alone. Nay, the world itself appeared to them as transformed into Sri Ram. In other words, they saw him wherever they looked. Trees in Ayodhya ever remained firmly rooted and bore fruit and flowers perpetually. Clouds sent down rain only when desired, and the wind was ever delightful to the touch. Text 104, remaining entirely free from avarice and satisfied with their own avocations, all of the Varnas were completely satisfied with their duties. So long as Sri Ram ruled, the people remained devoted to pious observances and never told lies. Nay, all were endowed with auspicious bodily marks and all were given to righteousness. So this is the effect of a qualified leader and that his influence can change the whole atmosphere in the cooperation among people in reducing or eliminating the criminal mentality in the endeavor to work in harmony with nature and in everyone to have empathy for all creatures and fellow citizens. This may not be wholly possible in this day and age, but a qualified leader can certainly move humanity in this direction. But if a leader is merely posing as a great personality while harboring wicked or materialistic desires and misguided intentions, the whole country will be directed toward ruin. Of course, when we read these verses, we can take them a few different ways. For example, we can say that these are the qualities of a qualified ruler and the effects it'll have on society, on the environment, on the way nature gives us our resources, and according to how we can live together in unity and happiness. Or we can look a little deeper and we can say that this is the beauty of Lord Ram. This is the power of Lord Ram. And this is what we should try to attain in this life as someone who can vibes the qualities and the intention of Sri Ram. And we can look even deeper according to our level of consciousness. We can begin to understand that the Ramayana itself was meant to promote the uh, fact that Lord Ram was indeed Bhagavan, an avatar that came down simply to exhibit the pastimes of a good king, a good ruler. And so in this way, we can say that the uh, Ramayan itself was there to promote the beauty and the strength of Lord Ram. And not just Lord Ram, but Sita Ram always Sitaram, and the epitome of that devotion 
which the Ramayan encourages us to acquire, is exhibited in the form of Hanuman. Sri Hanuman himself was so dedicated to Sita Ram that he would do anything and everything that was required to assist them. And not only was he so devoted that he did anything in his seva, his service, but wherever he was and wherever he went, he could open his chest and there in his heart was Sita Ram. So in the same way, we have this example to follow so that we can also put in our hearts Sita Ram as our motivation for life, as our motivation for the values that we hold, as how we relate to each other. So if we can put Sita Ram in the center of our consciousness, then basically we can also bring back Ramaraj, the kingdom of Lord Ram in this way. So what can be better than that? So the thing of it is, another thing we could say is that the Ramayan in that way was also the perfect text for pro protecting, preserving, promoting, for the perpetuating Vedic culture. And these are the four principles that I live by. I live in a way that whatever I do is either for the protection, the promotion, the preservation, for the perpetuation of Vedic Dharma. And this is what we can do by following, of course, the example of Sri Hanuman. So in this way, we can protect our culture, we can preserve our culture, we can promote it by let, edit, letting other people know about it for the perpetuation of it so it can exist far into the future for future generations. This is the idea. We need to protect it. So these are our duties. I act in this way, and if you act in this way, amazing things can happen, just like this conference. This conference is an amazing event for protecting and preserving the culture, promoting the Ramayan, of course, and trying to perpetuate it deep into the future. So if we all act together in this way, it becomes a very powerful force to perpetuate the culture far into the future. Because quite honestly, this is the real treasure of India. Bharat Varsha, Aryavarta. Because let's face it, you look around, look around at any other country look around at any other culture. What, how much information do they have on the divine, on the supreme? How much information do they have on the pastimes of God? Bhagavan Sri Ram or Bhagavan Sri Krishna. How, do they have a Ramayan? No. Do they have a Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita? No. Do they have the Puranas like Bhagavad Purana? No. So this exemplifies how important India is and the Vedic tradition is to the rest of the culture, the rest of the world. So if we simply share it, the point of it is, these verses are so beautiful, if we simply share it, other people will naturally become attracted. They'll want to know more. What is it that India has that is so beautiful, so dynamic, that lets other people people understand more details about the divine, the absolute truth, the supreme personality, all these different aspects of God. So this is what we need to do more than anything else, is make sure that as we are doing in this conference, we preserve, protect, promote, and perpetuate the culture. Because quite honestly, in this world today, as unbalanced as things are becoming, we need to realize that Dharma, Vedic Dharma, is the way that we can provide balance to the world. Just as uh, the eyes are a guide to keep the body on the right path, so Vedic Dharma is also the eyes to keep us on the right path of balance uh, and understanding and knowing what we need to do in this life. So the fact of the matter is, like in the Ramayana, if we can make Sitaram the core of our heart, the center of our consciousness, 
then at the time of death, we can also be focused on Sitaram and the pastimes, the pastimes of Hanuman, so that we can actually enter back into those eternal pastimes. We can actually get back to the spiritual world, the spiritual atmosphere, and we can also begin to bring that spiritual atmosphere here on planet Earth once again. It hasn't completely gone. We can still find it, just like here. Everybody is exchanging Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Sita Ram with each other. That is a way of bringing back the transcendental vibrations onto this planet Earth so that everybody becomes uplifted by that exchange. Everybody becomes uplifted by hearing these discourses on the Ramayan and how we can engage others, especially the youth, in understanding the Ramayan or listen, watching the play that we had last night or listening to songs. It all helps invoke a higher understanding and a higher degree of devotion to Lord Ram, Sita Ram. And by following the example of Sri Hanuman, we can easily begin to see what we need to do, how we need to change our lives to make them more spiritual. But right now, we don't have a big uh, Ravana to fight. Big Ravana, we don't have a big Ravana to take on in battle. But I'll tell you what we do have. We have the oncoming ignorance due to neglect of our culture if we don't maintain it. You know how to kill a culture? You kill a culture by establishing a gap between the previous generation and the younger generation and not allowing the younger generation to know the culture of the older generation. Now, the English tried to do that. Remember, they tried to do that. They tried to make the younger generation of Indians English by taste through the educational system. Well, they weren't completely successful. Thank Lord Ram. <laughs> but we have to make sure that our own neglect isn't perceived as a state of indifference by the younger generation. We need to make sure the younger generation sees our devotion, our interest, and our dedication to the culture that we have in order for them to take it seriously. The other thing is we need to be educated in our own culture so that when they have questions, they can get reliable answers from us, the older generation, the parents, because then they will see that this has, this all makes sense. Because the thing of it is, the younger generation lives by a motto, and that motto is, what's in it for me? If I don't understand it, I'm not going to follow it. So they have to know the answers to their questions so that they can take it seriously. So that's part of our job. That's part of our job of protecting, preserving, promoting, and perpetuating, which you could also say passing on the culture to others. So if we all work at this together, I do my part, you do your part, then definitely amazing things can happen and the culture will continue down through many more generations into the future. So I want to thank you very much for all that. And we have India to protect, the culture of Vedic Dharma to protect and preserve. And we have uh, the Ramayan to use as an example of what it takes to preserve, protect, promote, and perpetuate the culture itself. So anyway, this is the real essence of the Ramayan, how to engage our minds and hearts in the service of Lord Ram so that we can also become more and more spiritualized, so that we can also enter back into the eternal pastimes of Lord Ram and then become free from any further rounds of birth and death in this material world. If we can do that, we will have accomplished the real goal of human life which is exemplified, as I said, in the Ramayana itself. So thank you very much. Jai Hind, Dharma Rakshati Rakshita, and Sitaram Ki Jai.